and I, I just like the way he's actually uh, condensed the whole of the history and the whole incidents of incident of Karbala into this very important point about the preservation of Hududullah. If you reflect on the Quran, there is an incident the Quran tells us about known as the Ashab as Sabt, the people of the day of Sabt. What went wrong with them? What, what, did they, what was their mistake? Well, there was one group who actually broke the Hududullah and then there was another group who did what? They didn't break the Hududullah, but they, they remained quiet. They said, it doesn't bother us. We're not doing it. So what's the matter? <laughs> and when the punishment of Allah came, who did it come to? Not just those who were breaking the Hududullah, but those who remained Yes, they are. So those who are silent when they see evil being done are regarded as complicit in the crime. And that's well known, you know, it's a well known sort of in, in, the, in, in legal system. And so what Imam Hussein did was, you know, Yazid was the seventh Muslim ruler. Okay. There were six before him. He was the seventh. But all of the sixth were true mu'mineen. Muslihin, and they were true servants of deen as well. Protectors, actually. Yeah. They were all the protectors of the deen of Allah. They were muhaymin, truly. You know, they were protecting deen, each one of them. You know, Abu Bakr as-Siddiq, Hazrat Umar, Hazrat Usman, Hazrat Ali, Hazrat Hassan, Hazrat Amir Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala, anhum, all of them, six of them, were all protecting, standing up for the hududullah. But now comes a young man who is violating those. And there is Imam Hussein. Imam Hussein would be now 55, 56 years old, eh? And do you think he's going to tolerate this violation of the Hududullah? No, he's not. And, you know, it's really interesting to look at the whole incident of Imam Hussein. He didn't <coughs> even, he could have actually got a lot of support had he stayed in Medina Sharif. Or if he went to Makkah Sharif and said to people, look, I cannot tolerate this. How can you tolerate this? Th these were the Sahaba, these were Tabi'un, these were people who were loyal to him. But he didn't want to create what would some would term as fitna, that in the holy places and holy spaces, I don't want to create bloodshed. I will go somewhere else where I would, in, in a way, not be bound by the laws of uh, Yazid, okay, and it's really interesting, you know, what uh, the, the, the way Mawlana Sahib has put this, that this was the protection of Hududullah, and today, you know, we live in a society where all the Hududullah are actually being violated, not just by the non-Muslims and the government and the society, but we Muslims too are actually violating those Hududullah, and the invitation is, you know, let us come back to the hududullah. Let's become the protectors of these. Live within the bounds of Allah. You know, I, I've used the word the boundaries of Allah. Okay, for hududullah, the boundaries. Okay, you know, you have boundaries, and you should stay within those boundaries. You know, these boundaries of Allah. You know, we need to really preserve them. We need to remain within them. And Imam Hussein's uh, great martyrdom every year reminds us of. This. So thank you, Abne uh, Alamasa, for I think reminding people. You know, people just sometimes get stuck in the history and the events and forget the reasons behind it uh, and, and the purpose of the sacrifice. And so it's really important to uh, remember that it wasn't, uh, yes, I mean, the Shahada, the murder of Imam Hussein in itself is, I mean, so. Evil and can, can anybody expect that the grandson of the Prophet eh, could be killed like that by Muslims? No, but uh, you know all those things are yes, very you know we, we need to feel sad about them, but at the same time we need to understand that Imam Hussein radiallahu ta'ala laid a very important foundation, and what happened after that is something very important because the Christians forgot this very early on in their history, the Christians actually gave their religion to who? The emperors. 
In fact, the emperors were the ones you know, who had authority, particularly the Roman emperors, you know, the Constantine and then. So what happened? What, do, what, what, what would a ruler do? Well, this is a, a huge power. <laughs> they would use it. What did Henry VIII do when he got it? Eh? He's, he, he, he made the halal, haram things in Christianity halal, you know, openly. He said, I'm not, I don't care. What you, I, am, I am the king. I am representative of God. I have this power. I'll do. This is what would have happened to Islam. But Alhamdulillah, Imam Hussein radiallahu ta'ala an, made it absolutely clear that no, we will not have anybody tampering with the deen of Allah. Certainly no government, no ruler will have this right. And as a consequence from there on, our ulama made sure they stayed away from the rulers, stayed away from the wealthy people, stayed away from handing over this power of deen to the kings. We never, you know, this is, an, and this is one of the reasons why Islam has actually remained pure. Had it gone into the hands of governments, what would they have done? It's obvious what they would do. They would use it. Because, you know, governments are about manipulating, about taking power and using it you know, however they like. You know, when, when human beings have power, Stalin had power and he murdered 38 million people. Mazar is it 38 or 40 million? <laughs> it was something like that. Eh? Yes. So and, and when uh, Hitler had power, look what he did. Eh? When Churchill had power, look what he did. You know, he was responsible for the killing or the dying of millions of Bengalis, you know, during uh, the uh, Second World War. You know, but nobody dares to talk about Churchill, that he was a zalim in San Diego, na park in San and uh, of course, uh, and, and we shouldn't have his statue, that should also be pulled down, but of course, uh, we, we, we can't make that demand here. But again, these are the challenges, you know, this is what happens with governments. How they blind people, how they tell lies, uh, you know, the, the, of course, this, this country is one of the greatest liars of all, and, and its system, you know, uh, the, the, the way they colonize the world, eh? colonize our part of the world, and then, you know, still say, we are the, we are the most just people. Eh? This is, you know, this is the, um, this is the nature of government. So everywhere, Muslim government, Nawaz di, Nawaz Sharif ni, Muhammad bin Suleiman di, Bashar di, kisni gal karso, each one of them, because this is the nature of power, sadly. When there is power, absolutely, what does it do? It corrupts absolutely. That is a fact, okay? And Imam Hussein's sacrifice wasn't anything small, to be honest. It, and, and the reason why our ulama remember it is because it really, had, had, Mus, has, had he stayed quiet and he could have got a big pension, he was getting a big pension anyway, okay? And had he continued, uh, I'm sure Yazid would have given e him even a bigger pension, seriously to keep him quiet. Had he kept quiet, what would have happened? Well, you wouldn't have Hanfi Fiqh, you know. <laughs> you would have Yazidi Fiqh. <laughs> Seriously, there would be no Fiqh, there would be no Tasawwuf, it would be all Yazidi. It would be just like the Roman, you know, the, how the Romans took over Christianity, molded it, changed its beliefs, you know? Can you just imagine? It was uh, Isa al Islam preached Tawheed. All the disciples believed in Tawheed. They were Tawheedi, eh? Unitarians. You know, that's, there is still a group amongst the Christians known as the Unitarians. There's a church here in Nottingham as well, Unitarians. They believe in Tawheed. But no, the Roman emperors, when they had power, they changed even the fundamental beliefs. That is what would have happened seriously to Islam. But Imam Hussein, radiallahu ta'ala, saved Islam from that kind of fate and destiny that would have been destructive really completely. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to understand.